one Chicago station covered arguably the most obvious example of just how far these Democrat, once great cities, now collapsing ghettos, have fallen into servitude. Johnson says because of an unexpected budget surplus, he will allocate $95 million from the federal COVID funds to pay for the migrant costs without any city council approval. Now that should be a story that gets a couple of headlines, but it doesn't. And you know where else it doesn't? In all the third world corrupt mafias. It doesn't get it. So I thought I'd give the Chicagoans a glimpse of what could very well happen while they're watching one of their propaganda networks. Turn now to the chilling images coming in from Ecuador late today. Armed men storming a live TV broadcast in Ecuador. The studio crew taken hostage. It all happened after the government there had imposed a state of emergency. Here's ABC's Matt Rivers now. Tonight, this is the chilling moment. Armed men storm the set of a public TV channel in Ecuador, firing off guns and waving apparent explosives during a live broadcast. The studio crew taken hostage for at least 15 minutes on air as the country watched. Police later surrounding the station, arresting several suspects. I wonder if Kim Fox is prosecuting because they'll be out on the street in about three hours. In the meantime, this is the devolving of civilization around the world. It's absolutely chaotic. And we, as Americans, are not being informed of World War III right before our very eyes. And you're being told that it's normal to have a corrupt government not inform you, not only of World War III, but the fact that we have no defense secretary, none. U.S. and British naval forces shot down 21 drones and missiles fired by Yemen-backed Houthis on Tuesday. The projectiles were headed towards international shipping lanes in the Southern Red Sea, the United States said. Wow, I wonder if they're affiliated with the U.S. food uh, teamsters that are on strike. Should have the same ramification when it comes to rising costs. But who exactly are the Houthi squirrel? What do you know about? Them? You know, Iran pays for them and we pay for Iran. After all, we freed up all those billions and billions and billions of dollars after Joe Biden successfully sold the most important office in the world. Who are the Houthis? The Houthis are a rebel group in Yemen that have held that country's capital since 2014. Held the capital? You mean like Hamas taking over Palestine? You mean they're just a terrorist group that just said, ah, this country's mine? Boy, oh boy, how many Americans do that? Since 2015, they've been battling a Saudi-led coalition there that supports the exiled government of Yemen. Now, the Houthis have received both support and weaponry from Iran as that war has gone on. Recently, though, the Houthis have begun launching attacks targeting ships in the Red Sea. The rebels say this is to support Palestinians stuck in the Gaza Strip amid Israel's war on Hamas, though many of the ships that they've been attacking don't have any clear links to Israel. I don't give a rip about that. What about us and our boys? What exactly is going on? Surely we can get some answers. You said that uh, Secretary Olson took uh, part in the conversations regarding the Red Sea. Uh, do you know if he was conducting his business from the vet side or is he at release from the hospital? Uh, I would refer you to the Pentagon for uh, his whereabouts and his condition, it's our, uh, it, yesterday, at least for where it is today, yesterday he was still in the hospital when he participated in that discussion. He was in the hospital when he participated? Man, oh man, no wonder you can't find out whose eight ball it was in the visitor's uh, room at the White House. It makes sense to me now. The Biden administration is now mounting a policy review. The White House Chief of Staff is now ordering cabinet secretaries and members to notify his office if they ever can't perform their duties. That, that rule wasn't in effect? You mean we've been operating for 247 years and that rule was never in effect? This is the beauty of the gangster Democrats and Marxist mafia members. There is no past. There are no rules. Today, we can fix the problems that we've created. We're just going to do better in the future, I promise. And the kind of intellect you have handling all kinds of things. You know the average tax rate they pay? Eight, E-I-G-H percent. It's, it's, it's truly ill. And yet, even though he can't move his face, walks around like a drunk baby on wet grass, he's uh, had major successes where you just don't know it. Um, you know, when it comes to education, migrants, the economy, the president deals with multiple issues all at once. That is his job. There are multiple things happening all at once. Uh-huh. 
there are multiple things happening all at once. For instance, we've been overthrown from within, and our government is led by a traitor and a thief. Um, I, I've got two questions. Uh, the first one, the first son's art dealer today uh, was testifying on the Hill, and he said that he did not have any talks with White House officials about setting up a supposed agreement uh, to ensure that the buyer's IDs were anonymous um, and to, that, in fact, many of the IDs were known. Um, there was reporting during the President's first year in office that some White House officials were engaged in setting up this supposed agreement. Can you just clarify what the case was? I, I'm just not going to comment from here. I would refer you to my colleagues at the White House, uh, um, White House uh, legal office. I just don't have anything to share. So Hunter Biden's uh, artwork was sold for five hundred thousand dollars. What's it worth now? Obviously, if they paid five hundred thousand for it two and a half years ago, what's it worth today? Has it appreciated, or is it like real estate in Chicago, and it's worth nothing?